All right, here we are in chapter four on analyzing change. This is applications of derivatives. Now we're in section 4.2 on relative extreme points. So relative extreme points, what are they? Well, they're points on a function at which a maximum or a minimum output occurs. These are called extreme points. And so if you think about it, you know, the maximum or a minimum, that's where they're occurring. So that would be kind of the relative extreme points. Now, relative extrema is the function has a relative maximum at input C if the output FC is greater than any other output in some interval around C. Likewise, the function F has a relative minimum at input C if the output FC is less than any other output in some interval around that C. So we're talking about relative extreme. So, you know, this, if we call this our C, you know, around C, that's the max point. And so that would be a relative max. And you know, this one, if that was their C instead, then around that point, you know, so far, that's the lowest point. And so that would be the relative minimum. Now, relative values and relative extreme points. For a function f with a relative maximum or minimum, you know, depending on if we're up or down, <clears throat> value at c, the output fc is referred to as a relative maximum or minimum value. Now, the relative maximum and relative minima are also called relative extremes or extrema, and they're extreme values. So that's going to be the extreme value. So we'd look at that output and say, okay, well, this value on, you know, on, on the y-axis, that's the, the relative max. And, you know, this one, maybe if we actually cut it through here, you know, maybe this is going to be our relative minimum, okay? And that's the output value, our y value. Now the point C, F of C, is referred to as the relative maximum or minimum point or a relative extreme point. So then what happens is we have some uh, point, you know, this is at C at this point, and so it's going to be C, F of C. So that's kind of our y, that's our input, our x kind of. And so that would be this point here. That would be how we would represent it. That's going to be the relative extreme point. Now, again, if this was our C instead, then our point would be C, F of C at this point. And so this could be the relative minimum extreme point. And so what we have to do is we have to find that C, and then we plug it into our function and get our F of C out, and that's where it would be. And then we'd have that, okay? Now, critical points of a continuous function f is that c f of c point at which f is not differentiable or the derivative of f is zero. Okay, so f prime of c is zero. Now, the input value c of a critical point c f of c is referred to as the critical input or number. And so what happens is we're going to, for example, if this is our example here, if we get the function f of x equals 0.4x squared minus 2x plus 10, and then what we do is we're going to take the derivative. So we take the derivative, that's going to be the 0.8x minus 2. So that's our derivative, or our slope function. Now, to determine what our input critical value is, what we're going to do is we're going to solve that f prime of uh, x in this case equal to zero and solve that for x. And when we do that, well, we plug that equals zero, take the two over, divide by 0 0.8, and we get 2.5 is going to be our x. So that's going to be what we call our c up here, okay? And then what we do is we take that c and we plug it back into our original function. So we got the c from our derivative function. Now we plug that back into f of c. And so we plug in that 2.5 here and here, simplify, and we get out 7.5. And that's going to be our critical point. So that's kind of our c, and that's from uh, f prime of c equal to zero. We've tried to solve for it. And we try to figure out what it was. Then we plug that back into our original function, f of c, and we get the value out there. And that's how we did it, OK? Now, when we solve this f prime of x equals 0, uh, we get, may get one or more critical points. If you have a quadratic, you're going to get two. If you get at this point here, if that's a quadratic, you'll have two. If you cubic will have three. Now, the existence of a critical point does not guarantee the existence of a relative extreme point. Okay, so that's kind of a key point there. And so for a critical point, C, F of C, to be a relative extreme point, the slope graph of F must cross the input axis at C. So it kind of has to, when you do their derivative, it's going to have to cross that axis at those points. And so, you know, maybe if this was going up and maybe this is coming down 
and if we kind of get it back up over here so that's supposed to be down here but that's okay but you know it's going to be crossing we're going to find the, the extreme points and it has to cross that x-axis at that point now the relative extremes do not occur at the endpoints of interval because they have to be within an interval so you know if our graph is something like this we can't have an extreme point be at that point right there because we have to have some kind of other point at the end we have to be in a, in a um, interval and so it can't be the end point of that interval here or here it has to be somewhere within that range here that's got the actual interval on either side of it okay so that's a key to remember it can't be that end point now we can take a first derivative test for relative extremists. So basically, suppose C is a critical input of a continuous function of F, you know, so that's some function. We're, we're going to look at several of them here. If F prime, our derivative, changes from positive to negative at C, then it has a relative maximum. And so what happens is if we take our, you know, derivative here, we have positive slopes along the way. That's our function, f of x. And if we take all the f primes, you know, they're always positive going this way. They get to zero here. And then they're all negative here. All the tangents we could draw are all going to be negative. So we're going from positive to negative, And so therefore, that's going to be a relative maximum. Now, if our f of, of x looks like that, and we take derivatives, well, here it's always going to be negative. Then we get to that zero point, and then it's going to go back up to being positive. So we're going from negative to positive. So that's going to be a relative minimum. Now, the two next cases are going to be the case where there is just not a, a relative extreme point here. And that's when we have it's going from positive, we go to that zero, and then it stays positive. So it doesn't change basically sign okay it doesn't go from positive to negative it goes positive to positive and so there's no relative extreme now this one kind of is just opposite it goes negative zero negative so it doesn't change again and so there's no relative extreme here so no matter how we do it it's always going to be negative without with that exception of you know at, at f prime of c that's equal to zero okay so using our derivative test we can kind of determine you know is it going to be a max or a min or nothing okay now, conditions where extreme points exist. So for a function f with input x, a relative extreme can occur at x equals c only if fc is existing or is defined. So furthermore, a relative extreme exists where f prime of c is equal to 0, and the graph of f of x prime crosses, not just touches the input axis. So again, you know, we have to cross that axis for our f prime uh, of x to happen. So, you know, if that's one of our points and that's the other point, that could be an extreme, you know, maybe it was like that or, you know, like this or something, but it has to actually cross at that c. Now, a relative extreme can exist where f of x exists a relative extreme can exist where f of x exists, but f prime does not exist. So with that one, further investigation is needed, but so we're not going to continue with that. But th this can happen. So that's going to be a kind of a key there. So we can we can have that, but we need to kind of look into it further. So let's pause there and we'll come back with some examples. <laughs> 